Welcome back. Let's start with this example. We have that a two-year 100 par value bond pays 4% coupon semi-annually. The bond is sold at a yield rate of 6% convertible semi-annually, and we want to fill in the amortization table for this bond. Okay, and so this is the amortization table right here. Sometimes it is also called an amortization schedule, but what we want to do is fill in each of these columns and all of these rows that correspond to different values of the book value, the amount of the payment, the amount of the interest accumulated, and the amount of a principal paid at particular moments in time for the bond in this problem. And so the first thing that you want to do when you fill in an amortization table is to first calculate the book value at time equals zero. And so the book value at time equals zero for a bond is actually equal to the price of the bond. And so the first thing that we need to do here is calculate the price of the bond in this example. And so let's write down everything we know about this bond and then we will be able to calculate its price. And so we know that it is a two year bond and so remember that a bond pays coupons semi-annually, and so that means that the total amount of coupons paid, or the total amount of coupon periods, will be twice the amount of the years, right? So that means that n will be equal to two times two, which is equal to four, right? We make two coupon payments every year, and so for two years, that will be a total of four payment periods, okay? Next, we know that the par value of the bond is $100, and that is telling us what the face value is, as well as the redemption value, unless it's stated otherwise, which in this example it is not, and so we can assume that the face value and the redemption value are the same amount. And so we have that F is equal to C, which is equal to 100, right? F is the face value, and C is the redemption amount. And then next, we know that the bond pays 4% coupons semi-annually. And so that's telling us that the nominal coupon rate is 4% convertible semi-annually. And so in order to get the actual coupon rate, which is what R is, we need to divide that percent by two. And if you're not sure why we need to do that, feel free to watch our lesson on bond valuation where I explain that in detail. But for this video, we're just going to calculate the coupon rate by taking that percentage of 0.04 and dividing it by two, and that will give us the coupon rate of 0.02. And then we'll do the same thing for the yield rate because we're told that the bond is sold at a yield rate of 6% convertible semi-annually. And so that means that J is equal to 0 0.06 divided by 2, which is equal to 0 0.03. All right, and so now we have everything we need to know. We just have to write down our price formula for a bond. And we know that the formula for the price of a bond is that P, the price, is equal to the face value times R, the coupon rate, times the present value of an annuity immediate with an n number of payments and using the yield rate j, and then we will add that to the redemption value times the present value factor to the power of n using the yield rate j. And so if we plug in all of these values that we know into this formula, we will have that the price is equal to the face value of 100 times the coupon rate of 0 0.02 times a, and then n is equal to four, bracket j, which is 0 0.03, plus the redemption amount, which is 100, times the present value factor to the power of n, which is four, using the yield rate 0 0.03. And so if we write out what this notation would be equal to using its formula, and this present value factor to be what it's equal to, we will have that the price is equal to 100 times 0 0.02, which is just two, times the formula for this notation, which is one minus the present value factor to the power of four, divided by 0 0.03, the yield rate, plus 100 times one divided by 1.03 to the power of four. And so if you plug all of this into your calculator, remember that this present value factor to the power of four would be the same as this expression right here. You would find that the price is equal to $96.28. And so this price right here is equal to the book value at time equals zero for this bond. And so we can fill that in in our amortization table here and have 96.28, okay? And so if we clean up our work here, we can now use this book value to fill in the rest of the values in this table. But before we do that, I wanna quickly fill in this payment column because that's actually going to be the easiest column to fill in because the payments are all going to be the same except for the last payment, right? Each payment made for a bond is equal to the amount of the coupon and the coupon amount is F times R. 
And so in this case, that's equal to 100 times 0 0.02, and that is equal to two. And so each of these payments, except for the last one, will be equal to two. And so we can fill that in. We'll have $2 here, $2 here, and $2 here. Now the last one is different because the way a bond works is the coupons are paid every coupon period, but then on the last coupon period, not only is the coupon paid, but so is the redemption amount, which in this case is $100. And so if we add 100 to this $2 coupon payment, then our final payment made for the bond is $102.00, okay? And so now we have filled in this column for our payment amounts. And so now we can begin to fill in the rest of this table by starting with the interest accumulated at time one. And so in order to calculate I sub one, we are going to take our book value at time zero and multiply it by the yield rate of 0 0.03. And so we will have that I sub one is equal to 96.28 times 0 0.03, and that will be equal to $2.89. And so we can fill that in for the interest accumulated at time one. And so I'll write that in right here. Okay, so now that we have calculated the interest at time one, we can now calculate the principal at time one. And the principal is calculated by subtracting the interest accumulated from the payment, right? So in order to calculate the principal at time one, that is going to be equal to the payment amount, which in this case is $2, minus the interest accumulated at that time, which was $2.89. And so that will be equal to negative 0.89 or negative 89 cents. And so we can fill that value in on our table. We will have that the principal at time one is equal to negative 0.89. Okay, and so now that we have calculated the principal at time one, we can now calculate the book value at time one and we find the book value at time one by subtracting the principal from the previous book value. And so the book value at time one will be equal to the book value at time zero minus the principal at time one. And so that is equal to $96.28 minus negative 0.89 or negative 89 cents. And so since we're subtracting a negative amount for the principal, we're actually going to end up adding 89 cents to the book value. And so we will have that the book value at time one is equal to $97.17. And so we can fill that number in on our amortization table for the book value at time one. We will have that that is equal to $97.17. Okay, and so that process that we just went through to fill in this row of this table we can repeat that process and fill in the other three rows of this amortization schedule, right? So the first thing that you do is calculate the interest accumulated at that new time T, and then you subtract that from your payment amount to calculate the principal, and then you subtract the principal from the previous book value to get the new book value, and then you repeat the process again. And so in this case, let's start by calculating the interest accumulated at time two by multiplying the yield rate of 0 0.03 times the book value at time one. And so if you multiply 0 0.03 by the book value at time one, you will find that the interest accumulated at time two will be $2.92. And then if you subtract $2.92 from this $2 payment, you will find that the principal is negative 0.92 or negative 92 cents. And then if we subtract this principal from the book value at time one, meaning that we would end up adding 92 cents to the book value, we would find that the book value at time two would be $98.09, right? And so now we have finished the row for when T is equal to two, but what about when T is equal to three? Now we can start filling in that row. And so the first thing that we will do is calculate the interest at time three by multiplying the yield rate by the book value at time two. And so if we multiply 0 0.03 by 98.09, we will find that the interest accumulated is $2.94. And so then if we subtract the interest from the payment amount, that will give us the principal at time three, which will be negative 0.94 or negative 94 cents. And so then we can subtract the principal from the previous book value, the book value at time two, to get the book value at time three. And so we'll end up adding 94 cents 
to the book value because we're subtracting a negative amount of principal. And so we will have that the book value at time three is $99.03. And then finally, for our last row, we are now looking at time equals four, and we will calculate the interest accumulated at time equals four. And so we'll multiply this book value at time equals three by the yield rate, and so 0 0.03 times 99.03 will be equal to 2.97, or $2.97. And so now, this is where things get a little bit different. Remember that the payment that is made at time equals four is $102, because it includes the redemption amount, and we're gonna be subtracting that interest accumulated from that payment amount, and so our principal is no longer going to be negative. And so if you take $102 and subtract $2.97, you will get a principal of $99.03. And so if we subtract this principal from our book value at time three, notice that they are the same amount. And so our book value at time four is $0.00. .00. And that is what you want. When you finish your amortization schedule, the book value at the end should be equal to zero assuming that the amortization schedule includes every period of the bond. Okay, so now we've completely filled in our amortization schedule for this bond, and so now we have completed this problem. So for our second example, we have that a 10-year bond with a par value of 10,000 and semi-annual coupons at a rate of 5% convertible semi-annually is bought to yield 7% convertible semi-annually. Calculate one, the book value immediately after the fifth coupon, and two, the principal immediately after the 10th coupon. Okay, so we have two different things that we wanna calculate for this specific problem, but let's do one at a time. Let's start with number one here, which is to calculate the book value immediately after the fifth coupon. All right, and so before we can calculate that, we need to identify all the different values for this bond that we know from this problem. And so first off, we know that we have a 10 year bond, and so that means that n will be equal to those 10 years times two because the coupons are paid semi-annually, and so there will be two coupons paid for each year. And so multiplying 10 years by two will give us that n is equal to 20, which means there will be 20 coupons paid or 20 coupon periods for this bond. And then next we know that the bond has a par value of 10,000, and so that means that F, the face value, as well as the redemption value, C, is equal to 10,000. Now we can assume that the face value and the redemption value are the same because this problem does not say anything about the redemption value. All right, and so then we have that the bond has semi-annual coupons at a rate of 5% convertible semi-annually, and so that tells us that R, the coupon rate, will be equal to that 5% or 0 0.05 divided by two, which will be equal to 0 0.025, right? Remember, these rates are given to us as annual nominal interest rates convertible semi-annually, and so in order to get what the actual rates are, we need to divide them by two, and so that's why we divided 0 0.05 by two to get the coupon rate of 0 0.025. And we will do the same thing for our yield rate because the problem tells us that the bond is bought to yield 7% convertible semi-annually. And so the yield rate J will be equal to 0.07 divided by two, which is equal to 0.035. All right, and so with that, we now have written down everything that we know about the bond in this problem. And so now we are ready to calculate the book value immediately after the fifth coupon. All right, and so we actually have a formula for this. If you watched our lesson for this topic, I gave you a formula at the end of the lesson that will allow you to calculate the value of the book value at any particular moment in time throughout a bond's term. And so that formula looks like this. We know that the book value at time t is equal to the face value times the coupon rate times the present value of an annuity where the number of payments is n minus t and we use the yield rate as our interest rate. And that will be added to the redemption value times the present value factor to the power of n minus t using that yield rate j. All right, and so in this case, we know all of the values in this formula except for t, but we can figure that out pretty quickly. We wanna know what the book value is immediately after the fifth coupon 
And so that tells us that t will be equal to five, right? t is the specific moment in time or the specific coupon period that we are interested in. And so in this case, we're looking after the fifth coupon. And so if we set t equal to five, this calculation will tell us what the book value is after that fifth coupon is paid or at t equals five. All right, and so if we plug in everything we know, we will have that the book value at time five is equal to the face value of 10,000 times the coupon rate of 0.025 times the present value of an annuity where the number of payments is 20 minus five bracket J, the yield rate, which is 0.035 plus the redemption value of 10,000 times the present value factor to the power of 20 minus five using that yield rate of 0.035. All right, and so then if we simplify a little bit, this will be equal to 10,000 times 0.025. That's gonna be equal to 250, and that will be multiplied by the formula for this notation where the number of payments will be 15, right? 20 minus five is 15. And so we will have one minus the present value factor to the power of 15 divided by 0.035, the yield rate. And then we will add that to this 10,000 times this present value factor, which that power will be 15. And so if we write out that present value factor, we will have 10,000 times one divided by 1.035 to the power of 15. Okay, and so then if you plug all this into your calculator, remember to change this present value factor to be what it is equal to, which would be this expression right here. They would actually be the same. But if you plug that into your calculator, you would find that this is equal to $8,848.26. That will be the book value after the fifth coupon for this bond. Okay, and so that's the first thing that we wanted to calculate. But for number two, we wanna calculate the principal immediately after the 10th coupon. And so that is going to require a different formula. And so let's clean up our work here. We can now work on calculating number two, which we will need to use a formula for, like I mentioned, that we learned in our lesson. And so just like we had a formula to calculate the book value at any moment in time, we also have a formula to calculate the principal at any moment in time. And so that formula looks like this we have that the principal at time t is equal to the face value times the coupon rate minus the yield rate times the present value factor to the power of n minus t plus one using that yield rate j. And so if we plug in the values we know about our bond into this formula, except this time t is not going to be five like it was for part one, t is gonna be equal to 10 because we wanna know the principal immediately after the 10th coupon. And so the principal at time 10 will be equal to the face value of 10,000 times the coupon rate of 0.025 minus the yield rate of 0.035 times the present value factor to the power of n, which is 20, minus 10 plus one using the yield rate 0.035. Okay, and so if we clean up our work here, we can simplify and this will be equal to 10 thousand times 0 0.025 minus 0 0.035 will be negative 0 0.01 and that will be multiplied by the present value factor to the power of 20 minus 10 which is 10 plus 1 which will be 11 and we'll be using that yield rate of 0 0.035 but now we could rewrite this present value factor to be what it would be equal to and so I'll do that real quick that would be 1 divided by one plus the yield rate of 0 0.035 to the power of 11, that power that we just found earlier, okay? And so if we were to multiply all of this together in our calculator, you would find that the principal at time 10 would be equal to negative $68.49. That is the principal immediately after the 10th coupon is paid. Okay, and so we have successfully calculated part two of this problem and completed this entire example. All right, and so with that, that is all I had for this example's video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below, but if you don't have any questions, that's all I had for now, so I will see you next time.